Yeah. Play a T. Y'all that's keep me. it going for your host, play a T. I heard you scream. Now, is it just me? Or am I the only motherfucker understand he look like Cat Williams and Spike Lee? I'll smush it together. Don't it look like Cat Williams, Spike Lee? You push them together, you get a player T. So the young women out here, if you go out there and you mess around with Cat Williams, then two months later, you find uh, Spike Lee, you're going to have a little baby, player T. That's crazy. Like player T, that's me, my man, Mo Payne. What's good? Thanks, Mo. I appreciate you. Oh, you're very on. welcome, my brother. Man, funny stuff, man. I remember the last time I see you did your thing, um, he was down on Superior at uh, Mike's spot. Right, and right. And you told one joke, man, that stuck with me. You say, man, you got into it with the lady, and then you left out, and you said, fuck you, and him, because you a Browns fan. And I, what you, what? <laughs> that was my son. That's a true story. <laughs> That's a true story. See, um, I'm, I'm a Browns fan because I used to You're come You a Browns here. fan? Yes, I'm a Browns fan. When I came here and I started doing comedy, they took me to a clinic. Now, that's guy. comedy, coming from Atlanta. You right. Me to a <laughs> they dogged me, too. <laughs> they took me to a game, and the white boy with the dog head told me, you take that shit over there. Because I was, I was rooting for the other team in the dog pack. Oh, no, man. And they so they, serious. They ain't nobody school you man. for that. That's amazing. Why you think I'm a Browns fan? I don't care. If they got five <laughs> people on the team. I'm rooting for them. <laughs> right. I'm rooting for them because that, 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 that shocked me that people that are passionate about their team. I mean, they start throwing chairs, and I'm like, I'm hooked. Do you find the people be, to be just as passionate about comedy? Mm, you know what? No. <laughs> no, no. I mean, people start off, they want to be passionate, but comedy is so lucrative now. When they start making some money, everybody forget their direction. Right. And I mean, if people can say, oh, I'm going to stay grounded, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I, I don't know how you're going to do that if you don't pray before every show. Right. I don't write nothing. I pray before every single show. Is I just right? went and prayed before this one. I mean, it, well, you look like you were. You show. walking around like in a deep trash, you know? Yeah, I talked to my man upstairs and okay. he gave me what I need. Okay, all right. Now, what what some of the you know experiences you draw from to to make your comedy happen? Man, ninety percent of what I'm talking about is 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 real. I'd like to draw from a lot of pain. Hence, uh, mo pain. Right. You know? I like to draw from. A lot I of almost pain, had like four surprise ass whoopers up here. The dude, the dude on the Wilson food truck. I ain't want nothing but a damn hot dog and some French fries. That's all the hell I want. I never order from them no more. A hot dog and fries burn from the country. He gave me the bag. Now, the weight was on point. I'm like, yeah, he got me hooked up. I sit down. I don't see nothing but the damn hot dog wrapped up. I'm from the country. I'm very minimal and polite. I went back and let the country out. I said, uh, excuse me, Bubba. My fries ain't in the bag there. He didn't even look up. He took them, look, what you call them, tongs or thongs. Or, he took them and he, he said they in there. Now, it's packed in this place. Now, you're not going to just pump me out. So I, I try to put a little bass in my voice. This is how I know Cleveland is some stupid shit that made me pass out. I said, excuse me, Bubba. My fries ain't in the bag. When he looked up at me, the only person I ever seen shake when they stare is white folks. That nigga looked at me and said, look. Boy, I said the fucking fries is in the bag. I said, oh, my fucking God. Because I thought he was finna kill me. The way he looked at me, I was going to die. And I ain't, I ain't no punk, but I, I just go, I was going to leave that one alone. I took that heavy bag. I sat at the table. When I peeled the aluminum foil back, I took my finger with some white stuff. I said, what the fuck is that? And I touched it. And I, I tasted it. And I'm like, is that fucking coleslaw? Then I taste it again. I said, Wait a minute, that's grandma's coleslaw. Then I moved the coleslaw. I seen some fucking french fries. I said, nigga, my french fries is on the damn hot dog. He was going to kick my ass, and then he really gave me the fries. That's why I said, something wrong with Cleveland. Now, what was some of your favorite events that you did when you, when you rocked man, out? Man, you know what? I did, uh, I did a show with Shane. We did the Wild and Out thing. Shane. Shane. Oh, okay. Light skin, crazy Shane. And he got sick, and he called somebody. And I hosted the Wild and Out tour. I hosted like eight of them. And that was huge. And I'm thinking, I done made it. And then when I did the things with Cedric and them, I done made it. But the biggest was Dolomite. I Do mean, oh, Dolomite. Oh, you performed with Dolomite. Oh, my God, Dolomite. Now, what kind of experience was that? That had man, to be some kind of experience, that man. That was beautiful. He, I opened for him at uh, Hilarities. Okay. And when the show was over, he told me, he said, pack your stuff. 
and a man took me with him. I, I can honestly say I'm the last comic I think did a show with Dolomite. Mm. And that might not mean nothing to nobody else, but to me, that's huge. You know right. what I'm saying? That that's man hot. died a few months later, right. but he taught me so much at the same time. Now, how, how how ill is that to run into a major force in comedy like that and be able to get down with it? Right. That had to put a lot of wind in yourself. That put man. a lot of wind in myself and put a lot of comics at now, my Now, hold hands. on. Did your tenor of your jokes change? Because a guy like him will rub off on you. They did. They changed <laughs> back to what I tend to make people not let me do. Because, mm. like... Explain that, not people not let you do. Club owners, they got stipulations on what you can say and what you can't say. Oh, that got to hurt, mean, man. You're a comedian. Yeah, but that's, that's, it's nationwide, bro. It's nationwide. It's nationwide. I didn't know that. Uh, uh, a male you, can go in like the comedy that? club and not say the B word, but a female can go up here and say it any time, many times as she wants to. Is that right? You know what I'm saying? White boy can't say nigga, but right. we go up here and destroy nigga. Hey, this little boy. At the gas station, if I catch him, I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> I don't care if y'all get mad. Y'all kids up here need some ass kickers. I come out the gas station. He was polite. I mean, I was proud. I wish I was his daddy. He said, excuse me, sir. I said, what's happening, little man? He said, do you have any change you can spare? I said, well, certainly, because he was respectful. I went in my pocket. I pulled that change out. I gave him about 85 cents. I only give my kids 50. I gave him 85 cents and he seen the dollars in my hand. I know he from East Cleveland because he said, you could have gave one of them dollars, whole ass nickel. <laughs> and it shocked me so bad, I said, oh my God. <laughs>